It's no secret that American graffiti started in the late 70s and early 80s in New York City and has multiple genres that evolved over the years. But one thing that has remained true to the culture of American graffiti and is also a standard rite of passage is the bomber. Savs and Neo started this journey in 2013 to be the most thorough and prolific bombers in the history of graffiti. And they've actively sprayed those names currently in 49 states. Due to COVID-19, the state of Hawaii was shut down to incoming visitors until last month when they finally opened it up and they got their 50th state. These two prolific American graffiti artists in one common goal to be the first two bombers to touch all 50 with documentation of every city. Also all the while, trying to complete the 50, they're slowly knocking out foreign countries left and right. Purely their feat was a legendary play that'll be spoken upon in the American graffiti culture forever. I love Chris Rich. How do you feel about graffiti's relevance now? Current state of graffiti in New York is actually not that good. To be honest with you, you know, there's a lot of out of towners that's coming here, which we've embraced. They kill it more than us New Yorkers. You know, it's kind of sad in a sense. Cause there's a lot of carbon copies out there. But you know, I mean, New York just needs to step their game up. Stop with the beef and just go put work in. The whole, the whole shit with the interview for me is if I'm gonna be in New York, I might as well bring it to the grounds of where I started, where I, where like I first caught my first tags, where I first did my first spilling, where I tried to do my first piece. You know what I'm saying? Like 20 fucking five plus years later. And not to mention that I got tags there rocking from 1993. Like. What do you write? And where are you from? I'm MQ, and this is my boy Nate. Planet Earth, New York, Manhattan, Queens, Earth. Hey, good to see you guys, man. I'm glad you guys made it. Yeah, man. good to meet you, bro. Yeah. Draft talks highly about you. Hard body, I'm glad you know, yeah. Yo, how long you know Sav? My whole life. As far back as I can remember. We grew up down the block from each other. In the Bronx. And uh... That's it man. I'm a brother. How do you feel about Savs and Neo bombing the entire country? 
they're, they're showing nationwide how real graffiti writers are getting down. You know, how they're representing New York as a whole. Um, and that's a good thing. You know, it's good to see them go nationwide. Only a few writers have done that. So that's basically how I feel about those guys. Those guys are killing it. This is for SARS. I'm a real man. I drink honey. Tell me about the relationship with you and Sav. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, I mean, main, mainly in this business, I mainly do women's hair. Like, but I've been cutting his hair shit since I started doing this, like, 20 years. We were kids, I used to fuck around and give them fades and shit, work on my technique. But uh, there's more money in women's hair, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, so pretty much, like, it's a good spot to bring your wife, your daughters, I mean, you could come get a cut too, but, you know, as far as the females go, pretty much dying hair, you know, whatever. I don't even know what the fuck they do, but it's pretty much a good spot to bring your lady, and she'll be happy when she's done. That's a guarantee. Mention, mention Sal's name, you get 15% off. 666. Yeah, Mike. Oh. Here was like where you learned, or you know, it was like just burners everywhere, like top to bottom. Was all the graph writers under this bridge, right, right here. Right underneath this bridge. If you was from, if you was from the Bronx, you already knew to come over here and practice during the day. You can, you can get a little glimpse down there. There's not too much graffiti anymore because things change like that. You could go down there right now and get chased by the cops. When we was kids, you could go down there all day, all night. Nobody's fucking bothering you. And there was a place for you to go, learn, get your style together, practice your throwy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's get some shout outs. I just wanted to say thank you for the support for all you graffiti writers and street artists out there. Open late. Uh, we carry almost everything you need. Uh, follow us on culture underscore NY. Peace. Check out culture. That's where we get all our shit. That's where I get my supreme shit. That's where we get our paint. You already know.
No, hey, we do a lot of things. You know, we're active people. And beef is a distractor. And that's why I don't want beef. And I don't want, I don't, I want to paint to be a productive person. Retro. Are you a writer? What you write? You already know. I write Neo, U.S. Cuz, from Y.O. You can see right here, Yonkers. This is where it all began for me. Gate to Hell, Y.O., B Block, Home of the Brave. You already know, you heard? You from Yonkers? And why? Why you start? I got started right here, basically. Uh, gotta give a shout out to my boy Trez, who's now free. He did a long bid. Uh, he's the one that put me into graffiti here in Yonkers. I actually went to school right here, Museum Junior High School, when I first started doing graffiti. And uh, I got, you know, I got into graffiti. I seen, I seen a lot of the writers in the neighborhood, Ike, Poppy, Micro. Um, the time Ovi was doing a lot of bombing in Yonkers as well. And uh, it's something that I really wanted to get into. And it's just the crowd that I fell into. And before you know it, I was bombing every night. All country, what does that really mean to you? Well, you already know. All country basically means every single state. Um, when can you start claiming all country? Shit, you gotta do at least half the country before you start hashtagging all country. Uh, you can't, you can't, you can't just do backyard bombing and think that you're all country. It's all about doing every state, trying to conquer at least every, every major city in every state. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of money. But if that's your goal, that's what you're trying to do. To be all country, you got to hit every single state. Why is that the goal? My goal to be all country and hit all 50 states is because nobody else has done it before. No other graffiti writer in the history of graffiti has actually hit all 50 states. Not only hit all 50 states, but be actively up in all 50 states, which is also a goal of mine. Um, I've been bombing since 2013 doing the All Country Tour. I've been doing graffiti since 1993. Um, in 2013, I decided I wanted to go all country when I bombed Detroit. And um, from there, after Detroit, I forgot exactly where I went. But then I just decided I wanted to do the whole country. Why do they call you Silver Surfer? And what the fuck does Hulk Smash mean? Well, the Silver Surfer has to do with my, um, with my signature throwing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows, even from going on city back in 2002 i used to rock big i used to rock solid and that was what my crew was about we're, we're hitting hot spots huge silver fillings so from the silver fillings i started saying silver surfing as far as hulk smash hulk smash has to obviously do with a couple things uh every time i go to a city 
Uh, I, I'm looking to smash shit. Um, if I catch beef, you already know. You're going to get smashed. That's all it is. That's, so that's, that's the Hulk smash right there. How do you feel about graffiti? New school versus old school? Yeah, yeah, you know, I started I started doing graffiti in the 90s, and back then, I guess, you know, it was it was a little different. There was no internet. Um, there was really no pictures. There was no there was no way to 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 to, to get your shit out there the way it is now. You know, the, the, the state of graffiti right now is a is, is a lot different from when I was younger. When I was younger, um situation like you know, me being from Yonkers, going into the Bronx, going into the boroughs, it was it was challenging because back then you roll through somebody's block, you're getting beat up, man. You're getting fucked up if you're not from there. That's just the way it was back then. You're getting your paint taken, you're getting you're getting your paint sprayed on you. So nowadays it's like you can basically go anywhere. So you know it's it's a little bit different. It's 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 a lot easier too to get up. You got any tall tales to tell? Yeah, we could talk about um we could talk about the beef with me and Scant. That was good, man. <laughs> um Yeah, you already know. I mean, Scant's from Queens. Uh, I'm from here, I'm from Yonkers. At some point, at some point in the early 2000s, his family, his family moved out here to Yonkers. And, um, you know, at, at the time he was going over everybody, so he was getting dissed by everybody. And uh, I went over one of his dissed feelings and he got tight and he somehow got a hold of my number, called me up. Man, uh, the, the nigga called my moms, he called my house. And um, we ended up meeting up on my block, man. Dude showed up. One one thing about Stan, I can say he's a real nigga, man. He showed up and uh, knocked on the pizzeria window. I had just finished smoking a blunt, drinking a 40. Here comes this big nigga with his ugly scar on his face. <laughs> and uh, knocking on the window like, yo. So I come outside, you know, at the time he was, he was getting real dirt down real dirty cutting niggas shooting niggas so i said listen man if that's what it's gonna be let me go get my shit so we can have it out but one of my boys was there so we just fought it out man it was a tough fight man I, i'm gonna one-on-one one-on-one one -on -one, man we fought on top of cars on the floor kicking each other it was it was, it was a good fight man. We're, we're definitely cool a couple months later we bumped into each other and um you know, it was all love, man. We was we was we was fucking drinking bottles in the club in New Rochelle. So, our um, free scant, you already know, RTD. What advice would you give to a young bomber trying to get started? Somebody, I want to give advice. You know, if I'm gonna give advice to somebody who just started painting, something like going to a place like this to practice on a, on, a, on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? Um, before you hit the streets. So at least when you hit the streets, you already got a style together. You already got, you know what I'm saying? You already got a, 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 um, a flow to your shit. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever think you'll ever put the can down? Nah, well, you already know. If you check my Instagram, it plainly says there, only toys quick graffiti. I'm not looking to ever quit graffiti. Uh, is there gonna be a time in my life where I slow down and maybe it's not as uh, prominent or important to me in my life? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but um, I don't really, I don't really see it. I don't really see it not being a part of my life. Like I said, you know, I, I I've been doing this since I was 13 years old, man. Uh, shit. We got some tags in here from when I was 13. Yup, right there. See the little, see the red right there? The neon right there. Okay. So right there, that's, that's from 1993 right there. Holy shit, still rocking. <laughs> 
1993 when I used to cut school and come out here and, and, and bomb and paint and shit. You got anybody you want to shout out? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to all my people from Wyo. Uh, I'll give a shout out to um, my brother Menno, F-U-H crew, my brother Cypher, TMV. Give a shout out, of course, to Justin Ness, TVT crew, Jekyll YP. Free my niggas, uh, OMAC, B-17, DTB. Yeah, you already know we got the KGK crew. My nigga right behind me. Mister, one of my bombing partners, put one of my brothers since shit, 1993. Uh, we got my nigga Jays is up in here somewhere too, man. Those are two other tags from 1993. My boy Jays, one of my bombing partners, and then in the green, that's a Neo going down, 1993. Yeah, that's basically it, you know, give a shout out to all the crews that I rep. I want to I wanna also give a shout out to all my fans, everybody who supports me, everybody who buys my stickers, my artwork. I appreciate y'all, all my followers, everybody who likes my pictures on Instagram. Um, you know, a lot of the reason, not a lot of the reason, but some of the reason I do this is for y'all, you know what I'm saying? To, to keep new material for y'all. And, and to inspire the new generation that you could, you could be out here at any age bombing and hitting the streets and doing what you love and expressing yourself in ways that you normally can't express yourself in a normal society. Because as you already know, when you're part of the graffiti community, this is a completely different world. This is, this, is, this, is, this is a whole entity of something completely different. And everybody who's in it could understand that. So that's basically it. And of course, I want to give a shout out to my rock, my wife, B, I love you. And uh, that's basically it. I'm out of here. Retro. Peace Vandals and Vandalettes to Go Mathematics and you're now listening to the Vandal Album. We gotta bring something to them fucking crazy. Fire. So we plot it, we thought about it, and then boom! Motherfucking on a Tuesday night, we in the motherfucking building and we got motherfucking Neo and we got motherfucking Sad in the motherfucking building. You heard? Let me get a motherfucking round of applause! What's the plan, man? What's what's on your agenda, man? Well, right now, you know, we got a little, we got a little motion picture.
feel like I'm in New York. Now we're in the hood. This is the two train over here where we're coming up on. Um, these older kids around here, <clears throat> MK, uh, Key, these niggas all, I mean, they still paint, but they were all the older kids that wrote in the neighborhood. So, you know, I kind of, I kind of looked up to them a little bit and, you know, they schooled me a little bit, but they were more piecers, not really bombers, uh, but they still kind of gave me like, you know, I remember when I was young, um, and I'm going to show you this park right here, that Key used to play uh, basketball in it. And he was like the only white boy, uh, besides myself, I'm Puerto Rican, but I look white, but he was the only white boy in the neighborhood. And we used to chill right here. And he used to play ball with all these kids. So when I was like maybe 13, 14, I started writing salves, you know, from other tags. And, you know, he was like, yo, you gotta spread your shit out. Um, so, yo, Key, I took your advice, bro. I think I spread out pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Big up to Key. Big up to you Key. Know? Big up to Clark ID, one of one, one of one of the graffiti uh, pioneers from the Bronx, and uh, you know I I actually met him down at 238 when I was like. You see the greenhouse right here on the left? You literally, let's see if we can see this right here. Oh, see the train? See the train? Look, perfect. See the train in the back? You, you got yeah. the train? Yep. Yeah, pass so, it So, yo, right here, I'm gonna get out. So right here, just follow me. So yo, so right here, I grew up in this house till I was like five years old. And you can see the train in the back. You know what I'm saying? So, I would play in the yard and shit where that car is, and all the trains would come. Now, this is in the 80s when I was young, so, all the graffiti would come you know what i'm saying and i just was young and i would start to be like yo what is that and you know like i said i got older i got a tag and you know here i am man how do you feel about graffiti's relevance now i am really enjoying the current state of graffiti i fucking love graffiti man i could look at graffiti all day and there's a lot of it to look at right now so What do you think about Savs and Neo? We're from the Bronx, I'm from the Bronx too. I've been seeing these dudes' stuff since forever. Forever. And pretty much non-stop since, you know, since I started seeing it. And still rocking, so it's impressive. Because when you have fun playing basketball and fishing and, and painting, that, that's, it's just an endorphin. That's how I feel. Hey, <laughs> money talks and follow the money. And dollars make sense. And, and, uh, no, but the real talk, get a passport and enjoy the planet because we're from the planet Earth.
like, yo, that wasn't even planned. And we just caught a full fucking 10 car train bomb on the side. How did you start writing? And when? Well, he just called me saying that and we stopped by my old crib. Um, when I was five years old, I lived in a house that had a backyard that you could see these trains going through. I used to see these trains come in and come out and I would see, you know, characters, I would see graffiti letters. So it kind of just caught my interest. I was always interested in graffiti and then being from this neighborhood, uh, there's a lot of writers um, who always used to come around here, so this neighborhood was always smashed. So I started graffiti, like actually a tag and painting in the early 90s. It's been said that you're one of the most upwriters in the world. What places have you been? Oh man, I've been everywhere, bro. Um, you know, the, the premise of this movie is, you know, me and my man Neo uh, basically bombed, uh, you know, 49 states, and we're looking to make it 50 real short here, uh, real soon. And, you know, as far as me personally, I travel the world, bro. I've been to uh, 73 countries, uh, painted, you know, all over the world, man. Russia, uh, you know, everywhere in Europe, South America, Central America. Is, uh, uh, so, yeah, man, come from this neighborhood, you know, and, uh, you know, basically being from you know, a poor neighborhood and having no money as a kid, to be able to see what I've seen, uh, that's pretty amazing. Out of all those places, what was your favorite and what was the scene like? My favorite places are probably Central America. Um, as, as a person, you know, I love Australia, I love Egypt. I've painted both of those places, um, but there's not really, well, Australia there is, but that was more like partying and enjoying myself. So yeah, I mean, well, graffiti is definitely going to be Central America. It's real good, you know, El Salvador, like MS-13 and they just shoot just for even looking at them. Here I am, you know, out there by myself in the feelings to run up on the people here. You know, and I understand Spanish, but I don't speak Spanish, so it's hard to communicate. But once they realize, you know, they always say real recognizes real, so you're not there doing no gang shit. Uh, they actually fuck with you, they cool with you. So, um, yeah, shout out to Central America.
Why do you refer to yourself as the Floyd Mayweather of graffiti? Can you please explain this? Well, I mean, the Floyd Mayweather thing is a joke, man. I mean, that just comes down to like, there's a lot of haters out there. So people are always like, yo, why do you post this? Why do you post that? Like, I'm sure when this movie comes out, people will be like, yo, why are you on this penthouse? Why are you showing this? I mean, the reason I do that, to be honest with you, is because I come from the Bronx. I come from nothing. So at the end of the day, Floyd Mayweather comes from nothing. And he's always posting fancy cars, fancy jewelry. So I do the same thing. If I could reach out to one or two kids who come from where I come from, and they basically are able to succeed in life just because of something that I posted or something that I you know, showed on Instagram, then I'm good with that. And I basically just wanna be an inspiration to these kids to let them know that if you come from where I come from, you don't have to be a loser. You don't have to be a bum. And just because you write graffiti doesn't mean you're a loser. How do you feel about graffiti? New school versus old school? Um, it's totally different. You know, Instagram is cool as far as, you know, posting what you do and showing people where you go and things like that. But as far as, you know, the graffiti scene from where I come from in New York, like back in the day, you know, I'm from the Bronx. So you didn't really chill with people from Brooklyn. You didn't chill with people from things. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just think you need to compete. You need to go out and competitively get yours. You know, you went to Brooklyn back in the day, people try to rob you, they try to slash you, they try to take your paint. So nowadays, everybody wants to be friends and they want to do each other's black books and they want to, you know, hug each other when they see each other. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but what I am saying is like, just have some competition. Just rep where you're from, go out and do what you do, and you will get noticed in the streets. Do you care if people hate on you? Meaning your quote unquote usual posts where you're showing off? No, definitely not, man. I mean, honestly, if you don't like what you see, don't follow me. I mean, those are just straight haters, bro. And what's the saying though? If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And the reality of the situation is, bro, if you take Instagram or if you take this stuff too serious and you're hating on somebody because they're living a good life, then you need to check your mental capacity, bro. You need to really get yourself in check and figure out what's gonna make you successful in life because I don't give a fuck about Instagram. I post, yes, but like I said earlier, it's to motivate people. I'm not trying to shit on nobody. It, it's like Jay-Z said, uh, it was an interview I saw many, many years ago, but he said, yo, you know, um, if you're on the corner and you're eating your four chicken wings and you're balling in the neighborhood, then you're balling. While he said that, he was sitting in a private jet eating shrimp cocktail. I say the same thing. I'm sitting in a penthouse overlooking the Honolulu beach, but you could be a successful person and still be in this game. So I just do it for motivation. It's no hate uh, on my part. It's not trying to disrespect anybody. So I hope you all got love. Ooh, yeah. Nigga can't sing. A nigga can't sing. But I can hit a high note from a diaphragm. Any advice to the younger generation? You know, live a good life, man. Do whatever makes you happy. If you're running around the streets with $5 in your pocket and you're trying to go all city or all country, I think it's ridiculous. I think you should be a man or, or a woman and try to get your financial situation set up first. Then go about your business as far as graffiti or any other hobby you might have. Um, but that's really all I gotta say on that. That's all. That's all. That's all that man.
Do you have any shout outs? Um, well, rest in peace to Spec. Uh, got the hat on. BTC crew, uh, since BTC, GBTC, Ren BTC. Um, shout out to my crew, DS, stands for Don't Snitch. If you're gonna do the crime, you gotta do the time. Don't rat your boys out, don't rat anybody out. Um, IVEC, CB1, uh, CO27, Case, like I said, who brought me out. Uh, shout out to Joe's Boogie, uh, TV, and then uh, my friends who passed away, man. Right here, my boy Patrick, my best friend, love you to death, man. Uh, my boy Tommy passed away, love you to death. And, you know, as far as that goes, that's really all I gotta say, man. Shout out to my boy Neo for doing this whole country thing with me. And uh, that's really it. Country Kings. Kings. <laughs> 50 states, baby. 50 states. All country. Hawaii. You heard? <laughs> you heard, hey? Huh? <laughs> Why, yo? 2020. All country. You already know, right here.